Hello? Please let me in. Wait, what's wrong? I've been walking for very long and I'm in need of rest. Please allow me to come inside. Uh, okay. Can I get you some food? Water, maybe? No. No, your kindness is enough. The warmth of a home is enough. Where are you traveling from? Have you been traveling for long? Oh, I'm sorry. Where are my manners? My name is Laura. Carmilla. It's lovely to meet you, Laura. Carmilla? That is such a pretty name. Are you from around here? You know, it's rather funny. I've lived here all my life and I still don't know my neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm from further east. I'm merely passing through here. On foot? But by yourself? No, my, my car had an accident. Further down. Oh my goodness, are you hurt? Is anyone else hurt? Should we go and help them? No. No. That will not be necessary. No one was hurt. My mom went with the tow truck to the repair shop. And after that she will get a rental car and continue the journey. She sent me to seek shelter for the time being. Though, I have never been ill. I've never been as strong as other girls my age. And after the accident, my mom feared I was too startled to continue the journey. Which brings me to my matter of arrival, for which I apologize for the ill timing, but... Do you know if there's an inn nearby which might provide my lodging for the, a couple of months? I'm afraid the nearest town isn't for miles. I don't think an inn would be suitable for a lady such as yourself. You know what? Well, why don't you stay here? I'm sure my father wouldn't mind. It would be nice to have someone my age. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sure I couldn't impose myself on your family like that. I mean, you've already been so kind to let me, a stranger, into your home. No, no, you're not imposing at all. You wouldn't be a burden. I insist, you must stay. Well, if it's all right with your family, I suppose. A home is much better than an old inn. Then it's settled. You'll stay with us. One more thing. In the accident, I wasn't able to retrieve my belongings, and... Oh my goodness! Well, I'm sure I have something suitable for you in my closet. Although my clothes aren't quite as fancy as yours. Your dress looks like it belongs to a princess. Oh, there are no princesses in my family anymore. But there were at one time. What family do you come from? An old one. The Karnsteins. Karnstein? That sounds so mysterious and romantic. Do you live in a castle? Do you dance with princes? <laughs> oh, those days are long over. But you did at one time? Oh, please, tell me anything. Uh, there's not that much to tell. That life was dull, and I'd much rather hear about your life. Oh, my life? I live here, in this house with my father. Your life can't be as dull as mine. I'm sure there's a lot more to yours than simply being alive. I go for walks sometimes. The forest around here is beautiful. You have to show me tomorrow. It really is quite lovely. You're lovely. Where these woods get prettier and prettier each time I see them. I could say the same thing about you. Farm, you're making me blush. Plus, you've been here nearly two weeks now. Eventually, I'll have to stop getting prettier. <laughs> Not possible. Carmilla, you flatter me too much. I just want beautiful girls to know they are beautiful. Some charms for some charming young ladies. Charms? What for? Luck, protection, love. Girls such as yourself ought to be careful. There are monsters in these woods. Monsters? You haven't heard. Girls are dying. Found in the woods. 
two wounds in their neck drain of blood. Don't frighten her. There's no need to be frightened if you have my charms. Then give us your charms and be off with you. Put these under your pillow at night and you will be safe. Good luck and God be with you. You didn't have to be so mean. I'm sorry. You must think me cruel. Very selfish. But love is always selfish. Love? Come. Let us go. I'm growing tired and need my rest. dream. It's all over now. <laughs> Why must we come here? With everyone dying so suddenly, it just feels like, like we should show some respect to the dead. <laughs> the dead don't care about the living or the faculties of being alive. <laughs> you don't know that. Both life and death are mysterious states. We know little of the faculties of either. Well, so they could care. No. They most certainly do not. Well, stop being so pessimistic. Well, you stop talking about things you can't possibly know about. I'm sorry. Death troubles me. And I fear I fear losing you. I have loved no one and never shall, unless it be with you. I live in your warm life, and you shall die. Die, sweetly die, into mine. But I'm not ready for that yet. You... You love me? I think I might. Can we please leave now? I don't wish to think of death any longer. Of course. Usually I'm the one sleeping in so late. What time is it? Three or so. Your father is worried. I told him I would check up on you. I feel this strange melancholy passing over me. It feels like I'm sinking. It's okay, Laura, darling. It will pass. How do you know? Melancholy lives in me as well. Truth, I know not why I am sad. It worries me, but I manage. It doesn't sound like it passes. <laughs> but you will have moments where you meet people as wonderful as yourself. And you will feel alright. Love will make you strong. 
Do you love me? I live in you. And you would die for me. I love you so. I would die for you. And die for you. And that's how I know you will be all right. Now get up. Before your father worries too much. I'm Dr. Peridon. I'm here to see Laura. What for? I'm her doctor. Her father hired me to take care of her because she is ill. She is fine. She doesn't need you. That's not for you to decide. Are you sure I don't look utterly ridiculous? I promise, darling. You look sophisticated now. Was I a child before? No. Just girlish and adorable. Am I not adorable now? No, of course you're adorable. <laughs> but I thought I was sophisticated. Well, you can be both. Can I? Yes. <laughs> Is she still sleeping? She never wakes before noon. Never? You've been here long enough. I assumed you would know that by now. I assumed she was getting sick, like you. I'm not sick. I'm just tired. Nonsense. You are sick. I feel fine. Well, you look like death. I said I'm fine. I don't like your attitude. I'm your doctor. Your father hired me to take care of you. It would behoove you to treat me with some respect. Mr. Paradon, you're just a few years older than I am. Don't act all high and mighty. Doctor! And I think that Carmilla's attitude is rubbing off on you. There's something off about that girl. I think there's something off about you. You just don't like her. Don't pretend like you're using your professional opinion. bleeds with yours. Why won't these nightmares stop? Dreams come through stone walls to light up dark rooms or to darken light ones. They laugh at locksmiths. But it's okay now. I'm here. Rest. It's really quite alarming, isn't it? It really is. It seems like a new girl goes missing with each passing day. I have half a mind of locking up Laura because of it. The poor girl is already so sickly. What's the matter with the poor darling anyway? She is as pale as a ghost and moves as if she needs a long rest after every step. She sounds like my cousin Emma before she died. By the end, she could barely get out of bed. What did you do to help her? That's the thing. Everything we tried failed to help her. And the poor thing was plagued by nightmares. It was awful. In some ways, it was almost a blessing when she passed. Laura has nightmares too. She wakes up screaming in the night. It's dreadful. Worse yet, it gives that awful friend of hers a reason to go into her room. Who is this friend? 
Her name is Carmilla. She's this insolent girl. A, a bad influence on Laura, if you ask me. And why do you say that? She sleeps until all hours of the day. She has no respect for authority. And worse yet, she is positively obsessed with Laura. She sounds like a friend that Emma had. She met her before the sickness. This girl called Malarka. Malarka's mother asked the family to watch over her after the car crashed. She was around for months, and she and Emma were good friends. But when Emma died, she disappeared. She was a strange girl. She slept until the afternoon, and she seemed deeply suspicious of anyone involved with Emma. You might as well be describing Carmilla. They're practically the same person. No, that's Carmilla, unless you mean to say... Yes, that is the very girl who was in the house when Emma got sick and died. I didn't mention it before because I thought it silly, but after sharing our stories, and after seeing her... Well, for Laura's sake, I am telling you this. Go into town. There is a man named Le Fanu. He will tell you an old superstition. I know it will sound like malarkey, but... Listen to him. I didn't at first, but now he might just be on to something. Take care now and save Laura. Laura, we need to talk. Must we do so now? I'm awfully tired. Yes, it's about Carmilla. What about her troubles you now? She is a fiend, and she is the one making you sick. But I'm not sick. I feel fine. Laura, you must listen to me. I spoke to with an old friend, Miss Spieldorf. She had a cousin die of your very ailment. And not only that, but she was friends with Carmilla. Miss Spieldorf recognized her. Well then, it must have been someone else who looked like Carmilla. It happens, you know? No. Miss Spieldorf described this girl to me. She said her name was Malarka. They are the same girl. That still proves nothing. And even if it did, that doesn't make Carmilla a fiend. It doesn't mean I'm dying. You must listen to me. I spoke to a man in town. Carmilla is part of an old family. Yes, I know, the Karnsteins. Yes, but what you don't know is their nefarious history. They have a reputation around here for committing evil, unnatural deeds. They are a family of vampires. They prey on the living, especially young girls like yourself, and feed off of their blood. Vampires? They're not real, they're just stories. It's ridiculous. Really, Paradon, you have lost it this time. Doctor, and you must believe me, Lefanu showed me all the records, all the stories. Carmilla isn't Carmilla but an ancient vampire by the name of Malarka Karnstein. She has been hunting in this country for centuries, and you are her latest victim. It's why she's so obsessed with you. It's why you are so sick. She is the reason all those girls have been dying in the countryside, and the reason why you are dying now. She is a murderer, Laura, and Lefanu has assembled a team to hunt her down. What? No, Carmela loves me. She would never hurt me. And the Venus flytrap releases a sweet scent to lure its victims into its jaws. Oh, you're crazy. Where, where is Carmilla? With any luck, permanently in her grave. What if you die, you lunatic? Lefanu is out looking for her now. He's been hunting her for decades. With any luck, you'll be safe come morning. You can finally rest easy. No, you can't do that. You can't kill her. We had no choice. Yes, yes, you did. Carmilla loves me, and I love her. She would die for me, and I would die for her. And so she shall. Oh. 
You are mine. You shall be mine. You and I are one.